Okay, in last video we talk about the counting sword, and uh, counting sword is not a comparison based sorting algorithm, so we are able to uh, beat the in log n. And let's move on and talk about another uh, linear time sorting algorithm. And let me start this by showing you this card. So what is this? Probably you have never seen this before, and you may assume that this is kind of similar to a scantron. Right, but well, even for the the the, the more than time scantron, it doesn't really require you to punch holes, and so this is something really really old. And well, uh, related to this, and there is a story. And how did IBM got big originally? And IBM created the this can uh, the the reader for this kind of punch card. So this uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the punch card reader can scan and sort this kind of a punch card for the census, for the census data. And this is really, really old, more than 100 years old. And uh, if you have never seen this, and that's fine. And probably even if you ask your grandpa and your grandpas may not see that, have seen that too. Okay, well, anyhow, uh, our question start from this kind of punch card. So for each of the punch card and for each of the column, there are a total of 12 places could be punched. And as you can see, for each of the column, there are uh, the digits from zero to nine, so 10 digits, and then above them, and there are two other places can be punched. So for each of the column, there are 12 possible places could be punched. And then we want to sort the information and so that we can put the cards into the separate bins. And the problem, the problem that we have to deal with is for the uh, for the card reader, it can only touch one column at one time. Okay, so if we are trying to sort those cards and then we have to sort one column at one time. Okay, so this the similar idea brings us to the redix sort. So for redix sort, and we are sorting the numbers, but other than sorting, instead of sorting the values as a whole number, for example, 124, and then instead of sorting the values as 124, we are sorting three digits. We are sorting one, and then two, and then the four, okay? We are treating the 124 into three separate digits. And then we are putting all the, all the numbers you, you, under uh, using the same number of the digits together. In this case, it will be three. So we are putting all the numbers of three digits together. And then we are sort all those numbers, digit, by digit, okay? So when we are doing the radius sort, we have the array A, that's the input array of the values, and then we are assuming, again, all the values are integer numbers. And then we also specify the D, and the D says how many digits are there in all the values in the array A. Okay, so that's again a very strong assumption. So if the D is three, this means that for all the values in the array A, there are three and only three digits in each of them. And then how do we do the sorting? Well, from I, from one to the D, well, we are doing a stable sort only on that specific digit. Okay, so let's see such an example. So if we want to, uh, if we want to sort those values, and then we are going to start from the last digit, or we are starting from the least significant digit, and then we move on and on. And the last pass, we want to sort the most significant digit. Oh, where's my pen? Okay, here it is. So if we want to do a stable sort on the last digit. So we are only touching the nine, seven, seven, nine, six, zero, and five. Okay. So what is? Hmm. Come on. What is the result? The result will be okay. The zero first. So seven, twenty zero, and then after zero, we have a bunch of. We have only one five. So three, fifty five, 
and then after that we have a 6 so 4 36 and then we have 7s 4 57 uh, 6 57 and then we have two nines so we have 3 29 and then we have 8 39 okay so remember we are doing the stable sorting so well we have to do the 3 39 first and then 8 39 okay so i'm going to check all of them so the last digit has been uh, have been sorted so we move on and we want to sort the middle digit so for the mid middle digit we are touching the two five three five five two and three okay so we are doing the two twenty zero and then we have the three twenty nine and after that we have a three 436 and after that we have oops I think I missed this one so 839 and then we have a bunch of fives so 3 uh, 55 4 57 and then 6 57 okay so the middle digits are sorted and the last pass we have we want to sort we want to sort the most significant digit so we are touching seven three four eight three four and six so the smallest value would be three so three 29 and then we have another three three 55 and then we have four 436 and then 457 and after 4 we have uh, 4 uh, we have 6 hmm. okay we have 6 57 and then 7 20 and then 8 39 okay so this is the sorting process and then we just sort digit by digit and the cool thing is for each of the digits there are only up to 10 values so well the sorting will be uh, easy and then uh, we sort from the least significant value or, or the, the least significant digit up to the most significant digit and then our sorting will be done okay So, and the next question we want to say is, how do we prove that the Riddick sort is a valid sorting algorithm? So we have to assume that for the lower order digits or the less significant digits are all sorted. And then we are touching the current digit at the position I. And then there are, uh, when we have two values, and then there are, if you're comparing two values and there are two possibilities and if those two digits on the position i are different and then we are uh, in the position i or the digit i is so far the most significant digit to be sorted so which error is lower will be put the first so in this case we are still having a valid sorting so far from in, uh, from the digit i and then all the lower order digits okay and then another case will be if on the position i we have two values and on the position i those two digits are the same and then remember we are doing a stable sorting and the stable sorting means that even for the digit i those two values are the same but on the lower order digits which error is smaller will come up first so in this case well we don't break anything so so far on the digit i it doesn't matter that those two uh, those two values have the same digit on the on the digit i or not we can prove that so far we have been doing a safe job in sorting all the values using <coughs> using the Riddick sort Okay, so this is how we can prove that the correctness of the Riddick sort. And then, well, uh, let's talk about the time complexity. So, uh, well, and uh, before we do that, we, uh, we want to 
go back here and then what is the stable sorting algorithm do we want to use and I think well the counting sort could be an easy answer and then if we are using the uh, if we are using the counting sort and then uh, we have we have the uh, from uh, from n num we have n numbers and then the range will be from 0 uh, from 1 to k so the time will be o n plus k right and then in the radix sort we also have a d and the d means how many digits are we sorting in the in the list of a and just now when we did this example and you will see for all the uh, for for all the numbers to be sorted and there are three digits so in this case the d will be a three saying for all the numbers to be sorted there are three digits so we are going to run the redix word for three passes. So we are going to multiply a D to, to here. So we are going to have a ODN plus ODK. And then we'll, uh, usually we, we, we assume that for the D, that is a constant. And for the K, that is the ON. So we can still say the redix word that is a ON time algorithm. So it seems that that's cool, right? And especially if we are trying to sort uh, big uh, a uh, a big range of the values and then we can use the we can use the radix sort uh, at, and the trick will be say if we are doing the 64 bit numbers and instead of uh, doing a brute force way of a counting sort we can break the 64 uh, bit into a uh, a four digit of the radix sort and then for each of the paths and then we are only sorting the two power 16 so this will help us to reduce the k value of the of the counting sort so instead of having the k value to be 2 power 16 now we have the k the k value to be 2 power 16 so that is much much better so if we are doing a one we are if we are sorting 1 million of the 16 bits of the integer numbers and then using the radix sort will be much better than using the counting sort so and the question is why do we not use radix sort a lot so think about this and there are a couple of the issues and well let me ask you this for the quick sort do we put in any assumption well no right we can do we can sort integer numbers we can sort the numbers with different number of the digits and we can sort a mix of the integer numbers and the flow numbers so well for the quick sort there's no there's no constraint or limitation well and for how about the radix sort for the radix sort we have to put in some very strong uh, assumption to use the radix sort so this means the radix sort is not really a general purpose sorting algorithm okay and then what else well for the radix sort is that a sorting in place algorithm mm, well in the radix sort remember we are using the counting sort and for the counting sort we have we need the additional memory space to create the b and the c right so we are not just sorting in place of a because we also want to create the c and then eventually we are building a new list of the b and then we put all the values in the b instead of at the original array of a so well radix sort is not a sorting in place algorithm okay so well if we want to review what we have learned about the radix sort it is indeed a fast algorithm and then uh, it is uh, it is all in it's simple to code but it doesn't sort in place and plus the worst thing about the radix sort is that it's not a general purpose sorting algorithm okay well and uh, for this uh, for after this lecture and you want to read the textbook section 8.1 to 8.3 and in the next class eventually we want to move on to something else other than sorting algorithm we are talking about the median and the other statistics okay so that's it for today and I will see you in the next class bye bye